Welcome to another new video of interesting math problem on our channel Math Solutions for You. Please do like, share, comment and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. The centers of three circles in the figure lie on a straight line. If the two red circles cover 75% of the area of the green circle, what is the approximate ratio of radius of larger red circle to radius of smaller red circle? So let's start by naming the centers in this figure of the circles as P for the larger red circle, C for the green circle, and then Q for the smaller red circle. And these circles are touching each other. So, so let's name the points of touching as R, S, and T. It is given in the problem that the centers P, C, and Q lie on a straight line. And since the circles are touching each other, you know, their touch point will be basically on the same straight line with the centers. For example, if we take the larger the red circle and the green circle, so they're touching each other at the point R, so their centers P and C will be on the same straight line as with R. So we can basically you know, join these like points R, P, and C, and they'll be on the same straight line. And similarly, since the smaller red circle touches the green circle at, at the point T, so if we draw a straight line from T, you know, joining the centers C and Q, so C, Q, and T will lie on a straight line. And again, since it's given that centers P, C, Q lie on a straight line, so they'll be basically all part of the same straight line and they'll also pass through the other touch point S between uh, the two red circles, the, the, the larger red circle and smaller red circle. So that's pretty simple and obvious, but now we consider you know, the relationship between the radii of the circles in question. So let's call the radius of the larger red circle as R1, and that will make the total distance of Rs as simply the diameter, which is two times R1, right? And similarly, if we consider the distance Rt, that will be the diameter of the green circle. And let's assume that the radius of the green circle is R, so that makes this distance RT as 2R. And if we take the radius of the smaller red circles R2, then that makes this distance ST as 2 times R2. And the relationship between these is pretty apparent from this figure. Basically, we have the entire distance 2R equal to sum of 2 times R1 and 2 times R2. So you can write this. And 2 gets basically cancelled out from both sides and we are left with this equation R1 plus R2 is equal to R. Let's uh, call this equation 1. We are also given that the two red circles together cover 75% of the area of the green circle. So, what's the area of the two red circles? So, it's simply pi r1 whole square plus pi r2 square, right? And according to the problem, this is 75%. So, 75% means three quarters or three fourth of the area of the green circle, which is pi capital R square. So, from this one, we can, you know, cancel out pi from 
both sides and we are left with this equation r1 square plus r2 square is equal to 3r square by 4. So we essentially have two variables, two equations, actually are three variables because r, the, the, the capital R uh, is the radius of the green circle, which we don't know, but, but that's okay. What we'll try to do here is, you know, express R1 and R2 in terms of capital R, assuming that capital R is something uh, of a common or known, known parameter. So how do we go about that? Well, we can write R1 square plus R2 square as simply R1 plus R2 whole square minus 2 times R1 R2. And that's still equal to 3 R squared by 4. But we know what R1 plus R2 is. So that's simply equal to R. So we can replace this whole square term as R squared. And then we have R squared minus 2 R1 R2 is equal to 3 R squared by 4. And from this, we can obtain R1 and R2, the product R1, R2 equal to R squared by 8. Next, we consider what will be the value of R1 minus R2 whole square. So that's equal to R1 square plus R2 square minus 2 times R1 multiplied by R2. And R1 square plus R2 square is simply 3R squared by 4, which you have obtained earlier, right? So we can substitute that. And then R1, R2, we have just obtained that R squared by 8. That makes 2 times R1, R2 as R squared by 4. So we replace 2 times R1, R2 as R squared by 4. And we are left with 3R squared minus R squared by 4, which comes to R squared by 2. From this, we have R1 minus R2 is equal to R by root 2, root over 2. So let's call this equation 2. So now we have two simple equations, uh, and we can basically add these two up to get 2R1 is equal to R multiplied by, within parentheses, 1 plus 1 by root 2. And similarly, we can subtract equation 2 from equation 1, and then we'll, we'll be able to get 2R2 is equal to R multiplied by, within parenthesis, 1 minus 1 over root 2. And then remember, we are asked to find the ratio of R1 divided by R2, right? So R1 by R2 will be simply 1 plus 1 by to 2 divided by 1 minus 1 by root 2 in the denominator. And then if we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by root 2, just to simplify things, we come with this root 2 plus 1 in the numerator and root 2 minus 1 in the denominator. And this is where we use approximation because we are asked to find the approximate ratio. So a very well-known approximation of root 2 is 1.4. So we go ahead and use that here. Uh, so on the numerator, we obtain 2.4, and in the denominator, we have 0.4, and those two will divide to basically uh, give 6 as an approximate value of this ratio. So the correct answer in this case will be the option E, 6 is to 1.